Dave Dave's disappeared. Dave's internet just, just sucked. So now <laughs> Dave's just... It literally says uh, he will return when his internet gets better. Is that what, it's, is that what it says? <laughs> that's I just that's like what it says little... for me. That's fascinating. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely don't, but who knows? It says... So the funny part is for the user... Dave will be there the whole time because Dave is technically uploading his video file and audio file to the cloud. So when I cut the whole thing, Dave will be there. But for Ross and I right now, Dave knows that key. Uh, Didn't Dave say something about his internet know. being cox? No, fuck no. I ain't got no cox. Fuck that. You got no cox? <laughs> fuck oh, no. boy. Dave ain't got no cox. No. Nope. I thought single. you said you were dealing with cox. Oh, no. singular. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Man, yeah, I couldn't afford so Cox. I just got Cox, Cox internet. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not that kind of podcast. Right, That's fucking go. nice. <laughs> I guess ready. Yep. It's been like 45 minutes just making Cox I mean, internet jokes. Yeah. I, I can still intro the show later. So it's like I can come in and do it whenever I want. <laughs> Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Dave. Well, there it is. <laughs> Later, Dave. It's <laughs> 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 our podcast about anything and everything off-road. Uh, tonight, we are going to be a little all over the place. Oh, it's typically no. how we normally do it. <laughs> um, I'm in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast. Dave is down in Texas. Actually, in his home tonight. Normally, he's from the ranch. But... That's all we know. This, <laughs> this, this is the first time we've. This is the yeah. first time we've established that Dave has a home that isn't the ranch. Well, I probably didn't last I time. I mean, he... well, okay, so yeah. It's so, like I I that's... know that you posted it as I was uh, digitally stalking, but it was like twenty two weeks ago. So twenty two. Yeah, I I moved here like, and a we year would have we would have talked like. So, <laughs> I, I guess we congratulations. Have now, where we're just where we're just gonna we're just gonna shit all over each other for a minute. I don't understand what happened. My my internet was so oh, excited boy. before we before we started oh, going, and then it fell off a cliff. Or either so the good news is, void or I can do magic on the back end and make it work either way. So it won't be AI based. It'll be Chris based. But slide it around. Um, magic yeah, Chris. No, like, yep. since, let's magic, see. Since the last time Chris I talked to you guys. I moved into a house down the street, quarter mile down the street from the ranch. So I have just enough space between me and the ranch that I can still hear things that are happening. And I'm like, that shouldn't be happening. And I can just peek out my front door, like <laughs> man, and like watch cars come down the road and be like, mm, yeah, okay. Uh, but I'm not at work technically. What have you heard that you were able to decipher or discern that? No, that should not be a noise I hear from my my business well, so like there's like there's you know i'm sitting in my house and i'm like what what v8 is running well, there's a very small number of v8s on the facility my chevy colorado rally truck that has an ls2 in it would be one of the only things that but that's definitely not mm -hmm. running now it's driving definitely shouldn't be driving I'm like what in god's name and then i was like that's not an ls that's an iron block like that's a truck motor and i'm like but nothing like that somebody's what? on the property kind of thing yeah, and then I and so I finally I was uncomfortable enough that I drove over there and I was like, oh, Andy, one of our instructors has a uh, an E46 with a with a five three swap in it, and I was like, oh, that makes sense, but it was very oh. stressful. Yeah, okay. that. Yeah, that thing. Like a rock, oh, like a rock. Look at that thing with the Christmas it's livery. So good. <laughs> mm. <laughs> with a super rock. Colorado. Not call it Kaka. Yeah, we'll call, uh, we'll call it definitely. We'll call hold it. on. What what name is on the side of it? Hot snakes. Tommy Hot Snakes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not yeah, hot they're... ones. Hot snakes. Yeah, yeah. Also, no, Tommy Hot Snakes is a whole other like, Technically, platform correct. There was a V eight color first gen Colorado. That's true. So, there was. That's true. Yeah. And it was it a 5.3. It was a 5.3, and it had the AR5 or whatever the hell that horrible five-speed thing is in it that's like a 62-foot throw. 
from first to second? I good lord. Mm, I think I. I think it was a four L sixty E. Yeah, maybe I don't think sure. it was anything interesting. Whatever you say. Well, I, yeah, you're right. The the five cylinder had the I think had the I don't know, dude. The AR five or that's, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get to stick but, with a five cylinder and like rear drive or something. Yeah, the Isuzu five cylinder. really did put a V eight. Remarkably horrible in those. Like truly one of the worst engine and vehicle combinations of all time. And I know somebody who he to this day absolutely diehard. He has the most obscene, unnecessary Colorado pre runner. It's a canyon, sorry, it's a canyon arrow. Uh pre runner that you've ever seen, including like it's... full full cage and all the crazy stuff, and then a tiny uh seat mounts for his children in the back of it so that he can take them uh pre running in Mexico. And insists on his life despite all of the ls swaps he's done and eight and one headers and all of the amazing skills that he has he's like nope five cylinder forever he's on his third one but he just loves the five cylinder against all good judgment no Two different... what color is it yeah Oof. uh it's is like it, is it tannish yeah that champagne tan Flush. that horrible Flush. champagne tanness it's it's old dirty roy it's odr some... msc it's really it's lightly not, uh, sunburned, okay. Caucasian. Yeah, I think I yeah. got it. There's yeah, two sides of of a five cylinder. There's like so high better. performance Come on, Volkswagen, try, where they get you know six hundred like crank horsepower yeah. out of intake tune downpipe and like where that's pretty much it. And then yeah. there's this five cylinder which makes you question every piece of the business case that was put together to produce this vehicle. Well, no, the business case for this was, hey, man, y'all check this out right here. You know that company makes those box trucks named after that radio station? They're like the Isuzu NTR. <laughs> They're like, yeah, that one, man. They also make a truck, like a pickup truck. We just buy, you know how we do. I, mean, I put bow tie right front and center, Colorado. That's an American state. It also is a right. Mexican word, probably, but that'd be awesome as hell. Let's sell it. Let's put our shit on, man. Make it make the headlights look like one of them Silverados, a little tiny one. It'd be awesome. And they're like, yeah, sure, Silverado. whatever. It, yep. it was and more like Old Roy with his y'all Fuego want, y'all want four cylinder power and uh, and eight cylinder uh, fuel mileage. Here you go. Not even four cylinder power. It's like, do you want? No. Do you want to <laughs> drive something that feels like a an Acura TSX with a misfire? With 270,000 miles on it, but with an automatic transmission out of an 85 Corolla. Worse. Do we have the Worse. combo for you? Worse. No, thank you, please. It's too bad, because they really could have done a lot of good shit with that platform. Like, the H3T Alpha was awesome. Yeah. You know, but they were like, given we didn't think this wasn't. There was so much almost good in there, and it just never. There just was never also. Started. So much severe bad in the American economy. So, anyways, yeah, agreed. There are yeah. not a lot of good H three T photos. No, especially H three T alphas. They had that crazy slant back cat thingamajig. They were so good. That was like the only good, good thing that came out of Homer. Company. You know what's saving me right now is cars and bids. It's yeah. giving me. This Somebody listed one. Is Chris looking for pictures of an H3? No, I already got it. Uh, because that, it's cars and bits, so the image you, comes right up. That was my joke. You missed my joke. Nah, I know, it's Doug. Oh, and yeah, this yeah, yeah. And, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm into this. Yeah. Man, I can need to build so, an H3T, so, dude. What is the also, 5.3, <laughs> and I think they were selectable four-wheel drive, which... So good. Basically made it an avalanche with, I guess, ten percent less. Oh my gosh! Space. I mean, Sorry, I've never looked at the interior of an H three T before. Oh, it's not so. good. The, <laughs> it's not. It's not good. But the thing that about the twenty fifteen Colorado that was it twenty fifteen to twenty twenty one, it's kind of the same interior. They just like picked it up and. Yeah. Pushed it somewhere else. We call that they GM. That was, that was yeah. a SpongeBob joke for anybody <laughs> that was listening. 
and just pick it up and wait how how it to man, I, I wonder how so yeah, yeah ross you're right because the buttons are right there in the middle that's the sh- also the same shit that is damn near the same shifter as the colorado and canyon had for like six years well, it's the same steering wheel. It's basically the same dash shape that they've just sort of uh, macheted the edges of, and then they just like hit it with a heat gun and just shoved it into that area, uh, and <laughs> and the whole situation just reeks of yeah, I don't know, well, I'm close enough. This is like yeah. this. This this all looks like a company that definitely <laughs> should not have been bailed out by the U.S. government, but we were like, oh <laughs> man. Yeah, I, <laughs> Like, you know, Dude, don't pull it out. Isn't it fucking crazy going back that like two thirds of the, of America's largest automakers got bailed out, and only one of them like didn't have to take it? Is it's yeah? Having, I mean, it's it's zero know, percent surprising, oh. but it's it's pretty remarkable. But it's okay oh, now, guys. So worry. much going on. One of one of our big three is now uh, sounds like like uh, uh, like either a scene or like a base in a Marvel movie. Stellantis. It sounds more like an erectile dysfunction drug. I was say it sounds like ED medicine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. It, like a it, bathtub it, next to a lake at sunset. Make sure you ask, take your Stellantis. Ask your yep. doctor about Stellantis. Yeah. Stellantis Light might be right for you. With, uh, yeah. No switches Do working you own at 5,000 miles. Do you own a caliber SRT4? Because then you should ask your doctor about Stellantis. <laughs> I think, oh, Dave, I think you guys should name one of the campsites down there as the Stellantis campsite. Like, just... yeah. It's is it for lovers or people who just want to have shitty cars? <laughs> KY and Trojan hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> oh, this is so uh, brutal. Uh, sorry, dude. Yeah, sorry, Stellantis. I, I have the Stellantis product coming next week. I should be nice to them. Which you one? should be nice. I have a, a another, the second Ram 2500 Rebel that I'm driving coming next week so again like you just had one like two months ago dude that was actually like in the winter isn't that crazy that was last winter that was last winter yeah yeah Hmm. so but it might change because i the trip that i was supposed to use that for isn't happening so i okay need i don't need a very large pickup so certainly not with that attitude yeah no (laughs) He lives in Connecticut. Large pickups for him are like not ideal. Like, dude, my favorite is going well, anywhere, anywhere else in the world. You know, you go to New Zealand, and I roll in. I'm with the 2017 New Zealand Rally Champion. This is like in the end of 2017 or early, it was early 2018. We we're going to Leadfoot. But we roll in. It's like you go in the shops, got all the cars. And we're like, all right, we're gonna load up your championship winning car. He's mm-hmm. like, yeah, mate, let me go get the U. Rolls out in a Ford Ranger and backs yep. it up to a single axle car hauler, and we throw three <laughs> in the back single of that thing. axle car hauler. Oh yeah, like a like a like a fucking snowmobile trailer, and we oh, roll boy. his TP4 car on there, and strap it down with tie downs that yeah. are you know well, millimeters wide, not inches. It's <laughs> it's, it's weird how in other countries, like in Germany or Japan. The dick measuring contest is by way of performance. But yeah, yeah. in America, the dick measuring contest is big. Just go big. It doesn't right, matter you, what you can do with it. It performs pretty damn good on a cat scale inside of a Love's truck stop. Okay? Look how oh high my God. You don't Woo! want to know what happens inside of Love's truck stop. Ha, ha, ha. Well, I do. Well, I, do. I would say, well, Dave well, spent enough time on the road. He does. Yo, <laughs> I tell you <laughs> what. Uh-huh. You feel oh. a lot of meats in a foot long subway sub. I'm just saying, <laughs> man. You, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. There, there is opportunity in going around and measuring subway foot long subs. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. You're, you're going to that one, dude. <laughs> nope. nope. I'm out. The Massachusetts. You, you know what they say about the Massachusetts foot long. No, what do they actually? I'm nervous. I'm I'll, sorry, I'll, no. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you know next weekend. <laughs> Are you yes. going there next uh, weekend? Because otherwise, it's very weird. I'm passing through. I'm passing through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, uh, yeah. That sounds like a really uncomfortable sex move. Yeah, she gave me the old <laughs> foot long. What? Ah! How do you it. spell that? Yeah, well, I don't know. Massachusetts, I can never spell that. You spell that <laughs> call 911. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, accurate. Yeah, Jesus. Wow. Me. We uh that that really we really that went work went right off into the weeds, didn't it? Well, I mean you as soon as you went into the H three alpha, you knew that this was going poorly. <laughs> Homie, just... I I brought up the SSR in an article I was writing today, so Oof. my brain is off in never never land. Although Do you wanna <laughs> talk about what's at your house right now? Sure. At, house, at your house or oh at yeah, my, at Ross's house. house. I mean, it pictures? is very is likely this could swing by Dave's house. So it could. It's about the size of Texas. I have the oh, yeah. suburban high country with a, a slew of options, including this gangster LED light that some of the GM stuff has on the fold out wow. running boards. So you unlock is it. Is the puddle light not enough? It has a. It has a Chevy bow tie puddle light that comes down from the hatch onto the floor in the back. Yeah, no, that one's not it's not enough, obviously. Um I like it. It's ridiculous. Chris, I told you <laughs> how much this thing costs. Dave, you want to guess what the price of a of a three liter diesel baby Duramax uh suburban is? What, decently optioned high country, uh seventy seven five. Ninety one thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yep. it's fucking money. Yeah, um, that's so yeah. much money. I, I, Good lord! I drove it probably four miles so far, and I'll, I'll put another two hundred on it in the next, I don't know, forty eight hours. But in those couple miles, I was reminded that this engine is my favorite engine on sale today. Yeah. It is. The three liter diesel is just like, it's super smooth. It gets amazing gas mileage. And then like you put your foot down and it's, it it just fucking goes. Dude, So I had the three liter, the OM642 in a, in a, the Sprinter diesel in a Grand Cherokee in an 08 Grand Cherokee, which was the the best, best daily ever. And then I bought a 21. Yeah, I bought a 21 Ram 1500 with the three liter diesel, so. which I, yeah. I drive, which is which is perfect because that thing that got the uh, we called it COVID suspension, which was what does turn 14 have in stock? Well, kings in the front and foxes in the rear. So <laughs> okay, so, and, that's uh, um, that's a, that's a way to it works. It's good. Set up a vehicle. Yeah. It gets my it gets my that's like the test rig for all of our off road like track that we build. So we do our our so tour is our Texas off road enthusiast like pre runner race series. So we mm-hmm. you can run a street truck or you know full pre runner or race truck whatever you want. Is and, the uh, truck four wheel drive or is it two wheel drive? Mine. Yeah. D- I know my hair's long, and I know you might think I'm some kind of dirty hippie, but I ain't no two wheel drive dirty hippie. Come on now, ye if you're just pre running, you never know. No, uh, it's not possible. I, I don't think I can ever buy another two wheel drive truck. Um, that is, I one with you though. You can have a two wheel drive truck if it has 40s and they belong there. Other than that, your truck should not be two wheel drive. And even there, like trophy trucks have even realized that, like, yeah, okay, yeah. two wheel drive is that's quickly get disappeared yeah so these yeah. guys show up yeah. and they run this track and before they come i always do test laps in the ram so that when they complain about something i'm like well i mean i did jump it in my basically stock <laughs> ram 1500 and they're like yeah okay fine with, with kings and fox <laughs> yeah yeah with my, yeah. my you know bargain bin like dollar walmart dvd suspension just like yeah whatever i'll take it Yep, uh, but it works yep. good, man. And and you're right. It's like I I love I, all of them. I love all of those three liter diesels. I haven't spent enough Small time. Small diesels, ones. yeah, dude. The the three liter diesel that Chevy and GMC use, like it's just like perfect. It does everything well. It's oh god, I. It, it's a straight people, six, isn't it? Yeah, it's a straight six, and and oh, like good. it's quiet and it acts like a normal engine and then you put your foot down and it is just like full diesel full torque immediately if i could if i could replace the engine in 
my truck with any engine for a while it was like oh 4bt would be nice you know like 35 miles per Classic. gallon and yeah you know just no issues or like an ls3 would be nice but this three liter diesel that the baby dirt baby i'm oh, looking at right man. now hey you can't it's... argue with that 2.8 liters <laughs> then then there's the three liter and then yep. now you got the uh the three liters where is that the three liter right uh hang on i'm trying to see what what are the specs on the 23 one they're like they're what 400 pounds of torque or 460 oh, whatever i this, should know yeah there it is 460 pound feet of torque 277 horsepower that's that's 270, just, those, yeah, those are basically identical numbers to my uh super rally car last year <laughs> <laughs> And I spent uh, as much as a truck on that engine package, so. Oh, I mean, uh, it probably weighs a couple hundred 36. pounds less than. Yeah. That. There's no. I, let's see how much. Three liter Duramax. Wait. I'm reading your description because I know. So, Ross, I got the Michelins installed on my Suburban. I don't have photos Ooh. yet, and I'll, and I'll take pretty pictures as soon as I get them. They are very functioning as wheels. I'm very excited for it. There's tires. Good Lord, not wheels. I hope your tire, your, your Michelin yeah. wheels are functioning as wheels. Considering I'm the yeah. guy who corrects my children when they talk about wheels versus tires, I better get it right on here. Good Lord. Uh, sometimes one of my kids watches if it's live. Uh, who knows if Riverside went live tonight or not? Ooh. Good question. Um, I don't. But, yeah, the road noise went away that I've been suffering oh, yeah. with on the, the left front. So, like, it was the, the old tire that was definitely doing that. You got but, it aligned? Yeah, definitely got it aligned. But as they're, they, they, he, you always love that, like, mid-service check-in from the service advisor. And I'm like, fuck, we, what is it now? Notice that your front differential yeah. wheel is, is bad. Front, front but there's struts. no inspection point in your, in my front diff. Oh, we noticed it. Well, eat my dick. Well, well, front front struts are starting to weep, and I was like, "Cool." So now my perspective maintenance list, first being listed most important, is it, it's going to need pads and rotors in the back soon. I'm aware okay. of that. I'm stopping close to six thousand pounds fairly regularly. Like I knew that was coming. Um, radiator and heater hoses are suspected of leaking. It has been losing coolant over time. I just put it a little more like in. Sounds like Land Cruiser. And, yeah. Like Oil cooler lines. And... Yep, just keep putting that coolant in there. We're fine. Uh-huh. Uh, and and so the front struts now too. So uh, you can lift kit. the lines with things. Yeah. But also I can just put a lift kit on it and then not have to worry about the front struts or the rear ones and solve what that. What is that thing? What, what vehicle is this? my 2017 Chevrolet Suburban. So the Premier. thing that I use to drive my kids. So it's got the Magnaride ones. And so I don't want to pay. And, and now they have 190,000 miles on these. Uh, Which is pretty good. Because if you replace struts. Magnaride on like a CTSV or something at 80,000 miles, it's like a four or $5,000 operation. Yeah, it's a lot. So, uh, <clears throat> I've got I've got some emails out to a couple of suspension companies. I'm probably going to send more. Uh, God God help yeah. us. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just we'll make something happen. It look it sits like too much of a race car now. I loved when I had the leveling kit on it, but I understood why I took it off because it was making noises and I couldn't find the noise and that irritated the fuck out of me. Um, <laughs> I do think I figured out what the noise was now, and a lift kit will solve that. So. Yeah, just plus it was mad as hell. When yeah. you drop the kids off at school, all the other mans is going, no, man, this ain't playing no games, dude. Look at that right there. He's so, so Jimmy Jack. He could drive over any of our curbs. It'd be awesome. I, I used, so I had it with a uh, uh, leveling kit on it, but I, 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 I like bumped it in the back up on. too. <clears throat> and so, hold on, let me get my window up here. Bam. So this is what it looked like with the leveling kit on it, Dave. It It looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I but so last year, like so violently, it was obscene. It's somewhere <laughs> on our Instagram. Somebody showed up to our rally sprint with one as a rental, and I was like, well, I mean, if you like to party, I like to party. Anyway, sorry, you were saying. 
No, no, no. Hold on. I, you, you can keep talking because I'm going to try and find the video of you jumping up right now. I think it's just now. a photo, and it's like the most beautiful photo ever taken. It's just a head-on shot of a silver Suburban. I don't know if it's on my page or on Rally Ready, but it's it's just the front of a silver Suburban. A good like foot, foot and a half in the air off of a big rally tabletop that we built. Good for that. Um, and it, the thing <laughs> is, it jumps very well. It lands like the end of Solitaire in Windows 95. But it jumped good. It's just what goes up, <laughs> that nice land, and then it gives you a boing, 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 boing all the way to the end of time. They say it's still bouncing. The, they say it's still bouncing. <laughs> the oh, you just here you go. Let's get you, we'll find you a suspension package. Also, I'm just to follow up the conversation before. I'm seeing that the three liter Duramax is about 500 pounds, completely undressed. That sounds lighter than a 4BT because I think 4BTs are six to 700 pounds. Is it? 4BTs are giant. They're, oh, I mean, they're, they're heavy engines. Boat like, anchors. 4BT. Holy fuck, it's 800 pounds for a 4BT. Well, that, okay. well uh, I got close. But that might be with accessories. Yeah, it's a four liter, you know, four cylinder or a three liter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or a new three liter, one of them aluminiumized. Ooh, I'm just saying, mini, uh, yeah, wholesale, boy. dude, wholesale on the uh, Fox uh, coilovers, the 2.0s for the Burb. Um, is this a front or a rear? <laughs> I, don't even I already know love that Dave's looking this up mid show. <laughs> like 400 bucks. Wholesale on those things is like 400 bucks a shock, dude. Dave's You're like, we go. can rebuild this, we can make him strong. No, certainly we don't rebuild it. Absolutely not. Whoa, 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 whoa. easy now. <laughs> yeah, I guess is that thing still leaf spring? No, uh, no, no. It's, it's coils in the rear. Okay, all right. Hey, man, listen, listen, listen. We just saw <laughs> what the H three T Alpha looked like, but a decade and change ago. Let's not get all high and mighty about GM wouldn't do that. Meanwhile, transverse leaf springs. Get out yeah. of here. A hundred percent. The Corvette at least brings until a very recent. A hundred percent. My suspension. Cool. <laughs> my suspension setup was developed in like 2005. It's just so happens that the, the shocks in the front and the back are Magnaride shocks. Everything else is, is like 2007 on until we got to 2020. Also, the reality is it was probably designed in like 2001 and there was some engineer that's like, hey, guys, check it out. Here's something we could do. This is kind of similar to what Toyota started doing in like 1986. And GM was like, yeah, we ain't going to do that. That looks you know expensive. Yeah, GM's not. They're not smoking anything, though. That's too progressive yeah. for. Uh, that's for too no, no, no. It's a cigar, <laughs> dude. Don't. Sorry. I should have had a uh, <laughs> yeah, the context, dude. <laughs> well, the context would have been good. Fun. Like a little like you know, clip, and that yeah, no, some context on the on the big all inhale would have been good. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. definitely clipping that part out. Definitely, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Save that one for spank bag yeah. boy. I'll make a good one later. Yeah. All right. Well, the good news is there's some options for shocky boys. Okay, I'm just saying. I think that you get the full coil over from Fox. You're looking at 400 bucks a corner now. If you want to cut that down and just go to the conventional 4600 series Bilstein, looking at 100 bucks a corner. That's an easy win there. Now, if you want to go to the quick, uh, what do they call this? The front quick lift loaded ranchos. Oh, you boy. can kill yourself. Well, that would yeah. be a better choice. <laughs> yeah, just, you're better off just not. No. Yeah, no, just in your own life. Just, but those are 176 dollars uh, that will. You'll spend the four hundred dollars about two weeks later after you do that. Um, oh man, you got all kinds of good mm. options. Fifty one hundred bill stains, one hundred twenty dollars. Fifty one hundred are always there. That, that, so the that's like the only question that lingers in my mind is what, like, what computers are doing? Like, what's talking to the mag? The mag? Oh my god, I can't even say Magnaride right now. Like to the mag? Like, is there some kind of math happening? Because you do have to plug them in. I guarantee you there's some, somebody has like some real bootleg Raspberry Pi Magnaride delete computer that you buy for $125, <laughs> you plug it in, and it's really yeah. probably just a paperclip in like a Mentos, I mean, a, what do you call it? <laughs> you know, and you just like plug a thing in and then it's like, oh yeah. And you're like, why does this thing look like an Altoids tin? Because it is. Mm -hmm. um, but I 
I promise you it's probably not that complicated or I'm wrong and it's the exact opposite and it goes through like 13 Bosch computers and then it somehow <laughs> goes stereo and now you only have AM radio if you delete Magaride. <laughs> this as sounds... long as I keep my Android auto, I'm fine. Like a yeah, question yeah, for somebody more in tune with magnetic ride control than we are. So the the shitty part for me by the sounds of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it was up to us, we'd be like, Yep, nope, you're good. Just fucking swap Dave, everything out. What could possibly I heard Dave say, he turns it on and all is all the fucking lights are on and he can't Dave said just bring it to the ranch and we'll blow shit out and it'll be fine. Yeah, like that's yeah, what right. I heard. Dave said there's a fuse you could pull and everything will be okay. I mean, honestly, I, look, worst case scenario, you just need a little piece of electrical tape around that area of the dash, wherever the lights come on. Okay. You just right? cover those. Up, be all right. Ain't no thing. Yeah. Yep. You'd be all right. So. Oh, hi. Well, I'm still browsing for the suburban photo. I Don't really think I'm can't find say it. what I was about. Oh, man, I'll have to look and see. Oh, boy. Um, oh, boy, I can't can't say that anyways Dave, how that are else. you how, how's life oh been? man it's fine um yeah what what's going on in my life uh i have a, a giant corporate event in about 10 hours that starts we about yep. 80 to 90 people coming to the ranch Ooh, Back i didn't know about that one what's how that do you i said i didn't know about this yeah. corporate one i knew about dates coming up but I, that's a new one <laughs> oh no! Every day is something. So we we have a corporate event tomorrow, which will mean we're giving rides in UTVs. We're doing rides in rally cars, cater barbecue. Uh, we didn't bring the helicopter for this one, um, but we are. What else we do? Oh, we have mini motos from Red Bull, and it's probably gonna be raining. So we're gonna have a bunch of people show up and ride mini motos nice. on a gravel flat track in the rain. All right, hold on. Yes. Yeah. Corporate. <laughs> are, are we talking OEMs or are we talking? No, no, just like a. Uh, I don't actually even know what this company, company is, but you know, it's a software company yeah. or a you know creative agency or something. Somebody was like, okay. somebody who works there was like, hey, I should go to rally school and get my boss to pay for it. And so they, yeah. you know, put it internally. I mean, fuck yeah! And why? Then, what do you I need my boss to do that. He's not going to do it, but I need him to. It works. It's remarkable how <laughs> well that works when you like. We we literally, it's so good. So now we've got a whole system where. You can just email us and be like, hey, I want to do a corporate event. How do I pitch it to my boss? And we're like, oh, no problem. And then we will interview them about their boss and their their workspace and their team. We'll give them all of the tools and the things that they need to say. <laughs> we'll tell them how to go about the initial pitch, how to make the intro, pass them off to us. Mike and my sales team is an absolute genius. Gets it all teed up, set up, closed. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're like, how does what? I'm hanging out of a, a helicopter chasing a rally car around where my coworkers are in the rally car and I'm not paying anything for this. And I'm probably staying like at the W after this and, you yeah, know, going to it's, a fancy it's, uh, restaurant. I like that. I like the W. <laughs> it's, it's how, it's how a car guy tellers a business retreat for their own yeah, yeah, personal yeah, business benefit. Retreat. Yes. Yeah. I like that business retreat is really, that's okay. nice. That's, that sounds fun. It's like that. Um, how do you host? Uh, so we've got that, and then uh, also, what what UTVs are you using? Oh, I just I still just have our old uh, Wildcat Double X. Um, okay. We have a bunch of other stuff that's been out here, but that's we just pulled that thing quite literally out of like mothballed. We we're like, we should use this. We own this. So we pulled <laughs> it out and cleaned it and fixed a bunch of stuff, and we we're like, hey, this thing's great. Um, yeah, they're so we're generally UTVs pretty. are so funny. It's like. A, a like three to five year old UTV, you're just like, oh yeah, no, that that's that's you know the, old. You you're know like, the first oh. owner treated it like shit. Yeah, and that was me. Um, and I was also the second owner, and I also treated it like shit. <laughs> I was the third, fourth, and the fifth owner. And uh, well, it's been treated horribly for all of those. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, so we have that tomorrow, and then. Our tour season finale is Saturday, which is our our off road series. Uh, that one, we've done that for, I think tour is our third third or fourth season, but we've been doing the track days for um, Raptors, TRXs, pre runners for six or seven years, and those are super fun because it's mm -hmm. like you know it's this especially in Texas, like Raptor is is the new lariat. You know, it's like you show up and you're like, well, I mean, I wouldn't want to just I wouldn't want to knock it over Raptor. I should obviously just get a Raptor. So. Right. everybody's got these things nobody has anything to do with them so our in our track i did a huge overhaul on it this week because one of my guys was like mm -hmm. hey man so like this other place we go to they've got this one tabletop and it's super awesome and like you can just like stay flat yeah so that jump now is 
uh, up to the tail light on the TRX high. What? And, Jesus. Uh, and the it's now the the landing starts where the headlight is now. Yeah, and then okay. Tapers. What so speed do you have to hit it at in order to not have a severe problem? Oh no, it's really. I mean, you. The nice thing about it is, like, you go slow, you're fine. Uh, that's kind of how I've always designed them. But these guys now are like, you know, going fast enough that it's like, okay, well, fine. You want to party? Let's party. So now I have it set to where the, you okay. can stay flat all the way out of the corner before, um, and you shouldn't really need to check up much, if at all, for the, uh, um, yeah, for the the old. So finish. it's a, uh, it's a soft tabletop. Yeah, but even there, like the not way a, you launch on those, you don't like you don't fly. It's not like it's not super lippy, so it's a float. And so if you go yeah. up short, you just case the top and roll over. It's not a like super harsh uh, okay. edge on the That's on the transition. Kind of what Hoonigan has done with their this versus that. Yeah, series. Yeah, it's like it looks great on camera when the camera's down. Yeah, below your hip, but it's actually very soft. That's, I mean, you kind of have to. Like, yeah, the reality I mean, is, it's you don't you don't want people coming to your place to completely fuck up their stuff. Yeah, because then they're yeah, that, they do back. that on their own and just fine. Yeah, they don't need my help. Oh my god, I've never seen a, a ZJ in the air like that. that I mean, given isn't that, it, it great? I love. Doesn't that look thing. like there's much ZJ left. But <laughs> no, wow. there's yeah, it's that thing's real spicy. Yeah, the oddball oh, dudes shit. are wild, man. That I, thing parties real hard. I just remembered. I took pictures. I took a picture this past weekend. There is a guy downtown in my city that has three silver 5.9 ZJs parked on what? Like, on his lot. He is there. Like 5.9s aren't like a normal thing around here. That no. That sounds like my my photo of quintessential suburbia the other day with three white suburbans huh. within 15 feet of each other in my driveway. <laughs> I'm going to try to find it and That's send crazy. it to you, Chris. Uh yeah, it was it was a puzzling thing to see. Shit. Three of anything is always funny. Yeah. But it's also yeah, the magic you know, number. Five not five nine. That's a that's that's a real while. I, I'm with you. That's a pretty wild vehicle to just have a bunch of. It is. I tried to buy one once upon a time, and it was not good. It was not good. I don't. I, yeah, I don't. I can't even think of the last time I would have seen a five. The guy promised that it was fine, truck. and then we drove like a hundred yards from his house, and I braked for a stop sign, and the thing just shut off. And I tried to start yeah. it a hundred yards from his house and it wouldn't start. He was like, I promise this has never happened before. I was like, yeah, bullshit. Dude, really? You, you're telling me you date, you drive this daily. Come on, man. <laughs> um, I have a gift for you in our, in our chat here that you can look at. It is in Ooh. fact, it is in fact the suburban in question. How'd you find it? It's in my tagged photos. And I scrolled back. Oh, holy Fuck, Dave. Right back to Hertz. Oh my gosh. This one hurts oh, my I soul, know. Ross. No, I have another one. Look at this. Oh, this one's good too. Oh my god. Look how high it is. <laughs> Wait, punch in on that. That's a modern, that's a current Z71. Yeah, oh, that was fresh. That was a you know three thousand mile uh you know rental that it aged three X years that press day. car, hopefully. Yeah, I have, I have wow. a second angle as well. That's even better. You'll really like. Who's behind the wheel on that? Is that you? Oh yeah, that's definitely yeah, that's definitely me. That was me being like, so you're 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 sure you want to let me take this around your your rental? You want to let me take it around the track and then give it back to you? Yeah, that's the one. Dude, oh god, they oh, signed nice. all of the waivers. They paid yeah. for all of the insurance. You can see it's I'm, Dave behind the wheel. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, yeah, this is definitely... Uh, can you zoom in, yeah, Chris? Is, can you punch? Um, punch that? I forgot how good this is. It makes me so happy. Do, 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 do. It's not giving me more options, Ross. Homie, if you ever want to do a modern Enhance. smoking Enhance. and abandoned, Enhance. you got Enhance. your fucking car right there. Yeah. 
Yeah, that thing. You can fit a whole as big lot as it's going to get. Whole lot of beer in the back of one of those things too. So. Yeah. Same. Man, that was fun. Yeah, that uh. That was good. It landed real bad, but. I mean, I, let's say it flew well and it landed level. It just was real bouncy, you know? Your that's spot. actually funny. We mentioned ranchos. That thing has the old factory ranchos, and they yeah. are... <clears throat> they are not man. large tubes for what that weight needs. Yeah, no. No, no. The the form, the the, uh, the the weight to tube diameter ratio is significantly <laughs> lower than not my good. preferred numbers somebody forgot the one on that the, the joke is not good bob and that is not good bob that um, is not good bob. speaking of landing and uh and taking off can we talk about about the peak about the old pike's peak oh yeah 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 i wasn't sure if you were gonna i was man i could have gone so many different ways i was uh, like we gonna after f1 delivery are we gonna talk yeah. about uh fly like what flying things are we talking about here yeah. Well, okay, so yeah, no, well, let's the, back up then. Let's talk about F1. Is, let's I was like, hold on, doesn't Dave, doesn't your lady also isn't she a pilot? So like I wasn't sure. Well, we, we we're both really bad at actually getting our hours, but yeah, she flies uh, more okay. than I do. Sure. So yeah. between helicopters and and pilot time. All right. Oh, did you, so so did, we, you guys see, did you guys see the uh yeah, that whole affair? Like, yeah. did you see the actual, like, the actual official Red Bull stunt for this? No. Um, oh, yeah, so this was how, this was how uh, Red Bull <clears throat> delivered. So each of the U.S. races gets a, um, gets its own special livery. And so for the U.S. GP, we got a call from our buddy Alex at Red Bull, and he was like, okay, so for the livery reveal, here's what I'm thinking. We're going to get Brandon to fly the helicopter, and we're going to put it on, like, a platform and fly that shit in. Mm-hmm. We're like, fly it into where? He's like, to Oracle's okay. campus downtown. We're like, okay, yeah, sure. So sure enough, I get a call from Brandon. He's like, hey, man, you going to build us this platform for this thing so I can fly it in? I was like, yeah, you got it, man. Sure. sure. And then a lot of things happened a few months go by. And then three weeks before uh, USGP, they were like, hey, can you still build that? And I was like, I guess. And so we called our buddy Nate Wessel, who is currently living at Pastrana Land doing stuff with Travis for Channel 199. Nate designed it in SketchUp, flew in. We got a bunch of materials, built it in two days, and then had to and then had to get the engineering stamp for it because you know that's how that works. Um, yeah, we had to design and build the whole thing, then get the engineering stamps, and then it was so that what you just saw was the test flight. So that was the first time the car had been loaded. We flew it around the ranch twice, did two tests, everything was good, and then we loaded it up. I sent two two teams with two trucks and trailers, one with the platform and then one enclosed because nobody had seen the livery. So we had to keep it secret Mm -hmm. all packaged up and we went to a staging area and we had explicit instructions that were be on standby, but be ready to load out because if we don't get an insurance certificate, then we're not doing this and we're going to have you just bring the car and roll it in. So we were on standby, like maybe we're going to fly this in with a helicopter or maybe we're just going to unload it at a trailer and push it. We have no idea. And the, Yep, the the cert came in 28 minutes before takeoff. We got the insurance policy. Of course it did. Yeah, so we loaded it on, uh, loaded on the platform, strapped it down, took off, flew through downtown Austin or over the river, I should say, uh, and then we delivered it to Oracle's campus where Max and Checo and and Christian Horner and the whole team were all hanging out, and everybody was just like, "What? This is the most absurd livery reveal of all time." I mean, literally. <laughs> This photo, <laughs> those four pieces of Harbor Freight rope were being cut at like 12.30 p.m. And this photo was taken at 5 p.m. So, and that <laughs> whole platform, this was on, okay. what was this on? Like, this was on Thursday and that whole platform was built the like, the like previous Friday or something like that or Wednesday. It, it, like we built it a week and a half earlier, painted it underneath there's Red Bull lettering. Yeah. So uh we like nate when he built it he cut out the red bull logo welded on the bottom and then i messaged him was like hey can i get the hex code for the um for the red bull racing red so that we can cut it on our print it and cut it on our vinyl cutter and you know or our vinyl uh, printer and lay it on there and they're like oh yeah it's got like a fluorescent effect though it's technically our own proprietary color we'll just overnight you a roll of it from um from red bull racing so we have a roll of this red bull racing red that's literally their own proprietary like fluorescent sort of metallic 
And I was like, that's silly. We could have just printed red. We put it on there and it took off. And I was like, that was not silly. That was the right choice. That looks so good. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, first of all, the funny part about this is the, you know, the joke about everybody being able to see the floor when yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. the secret is yeah. the floor. And yeah. also I work kind of tangentially with a company that sponsors Red Bull and yeah. the color the hex codes for everything is like lockdown is not even close to being the right phrase for it yeah but so strange how does this tie into the video of you pushing a car pushing one of the red bull cars through what looked like an airport oh that's so we've been managing these cars for um red bull for like three years so it started out with one uh and then became two last year and then this year it became three and then four mm. so we oh uh, and it's usually just during usually just during like the month or two leading up to the race um and then this year it's that but then that car that you see in the video now lives with us uh full time so that's um that's our own we just have we just have it's a static car it doesn't have powertrain or anything in it but that just lives at the ranch so um yeah, so now we just have an F1 car laying around. So, and then of course I decided that we were after USGP, we what? brought the other three cars. We had all of them together. We were waiting on the fourth car to come, but we had the three cars together. Yeah, this. And I was like, well, you know, when do you have three F1 cars and you're like bootleg? Look, you can see the holes in the wall of this of this building. Like when do you have <laughs> together and then just a Celine GT4 car in the background. So, I thought it would be funny. I made this video just to send to my buddy at Red Bull. And the the joke is in the video I'm saying a little known fact uh, F1 teams the cars are disposable they throw them away after the race because it's too expensive <laughs> so we got Max's car Checo's car and uh -huh. they're not supposed to have backup cars but we got their backup car and all of the spares um, just hang out after the race find somebody make friends in the paddock and then if you bring cash you can take cars home. And this video has 4 million views and the number of people who have commented and I quote, how cheap and the number of DMs that I've gotten that people are like, bro, how much would you trade it for my 96 Bronco? Like it is un. I was like, I, like I knew some people yeah, might. Yeah. They're like, what? But <clears throat> I, they're, what? They're all from I mean, us or mm -hmm. Aston Martin or yeah, right. No, like I'm, I'm naive, somebody. sure, to have believed that people <laughs> that people weren't going to be that. Like I'm the naive one, not them, because I didn't think people were going to be that Dude. dumb. But I can't, I can't. I'm, I'm still catching my breath from the number of messages. And then like people will message and be like, "That's not true. That would never happen. This is a <laughs> lie. It's like this is a scam." And I was like, "It's a scam would imply that I've asked for your social security number, or that there was any action item." Yeah, like I'm like, who am I scamming? Your like your oh, your stop. caption says, "What's your favorite kind of tire?" Mine satire, and literally okay. nobody takes the time. Also, uh, no, that if they're presenting that it's a scam, that that means they have something to lose. So what are they? Yeah, like I didn't ask for it. <laughs> to lose in this circumstance. And some shame. Oh my so, god. So I yeah, posted yeah. it on Instagram first with that caption and then I reposted it on TikTok with a completely different caption that was like it's an IQ test to see who actually reads the caption and then I detailed <laughs> everything I just shared with you in the caption. I was like, "Oh, we manage these show cars for Red Bull and so after the race I thought it would be fun, you know, blah blah blah." Which was great because then the people who did read the caption went in the comment section and they were like they were the warriors. They were uh, the, anybody uh, who was like, "This isn't true." They were like, "Clearly, you didn't read the caption." It was like, "Whoa!" I'll just like, <laughs> oh my put, god, put Homer Simpson right into this bush, dude. Yeah, isn't oh, the internet Lord. great? <laughs> Combined <laughs> five million plus views between yeah, Instagram minutes. and TikTok. Yeah. yeah, for a thing that I recorded to send to my friend, I wasn't even going to post it. I like, I was like, "Oh, this probably is in poor taste." Like. Red Bull probably wouldn't want me to post this because it's obvious. And I, so I sent it. He's like, no, you should totally post that. I was like, yeah, okay, fine. So I posted it. Yeah, man. And then yeah. visibility, there visibility, it like it's, it's. Yeah. And it's also, like, I think we both were like, no, surely people, this will, people will think this is funny. Which oh my they gosh. did. Most, most people did, but man. And it's, it's, it's pretty consistently people with like three to, 150 followers who say the most 
violent, obscene, hateful, like just such a fascinating, it's just the amount of pain that some people are in, in, in their lives. Like my old, my, yes. the best thing that they can do is to just say, use this outlet to channel yeah. something. Human psyche is not that, a normal thing that we get into on this show. So. Oh, that's all I talk about. So yeah, that's was, like 90% of my work. I mean, literally like we in, in our, the first 20 minutes of being at rally ready, we talked to you about the amygdala and why your brain is doing what it's doing and why it's hard to understand because your brain thinks you're being chased by a lion and the repetition creates comfort and normalizes this, in which case allows your new brain to be able to join your old brain and like the neural pathways and why we do the clutch and the break back to back so that you don't replace a neural pathway, you add a parallel nerve. So that's, yeah, the, the psyche and the human condition is an, an integral part of most conversations for me. <laughs> See, all all I just heard was why I should go spend money down there. Like that's yes, yes. let's go, yes. dude. It's yeah. PayPal at rallyready.com. Just just send it over, whatever you'd like, well, however much you can send. And mm. I and I and it's not so much for myself because I'm at least at an age where like caution is a part of everything because I've got four mouths to feed. But like for the 15 year old that has started driving, and for the 12 year old. Shit, yeah. I don't even know how old he is. You yeah, he's 12 because he plays 13 U baseball. Hey, um, well, Ross, their birthdays move. They like their yeah, birthdays yeah. the year, the ages move. change. Also, I have yep. I have 25% of the birthdays to keep tabs on. Yeah, so. you have one kid. Like, I got yeah. it. Like, even yeah. I know when her birthday is. I know it's a summer birthday. Come um, on, dude. Um, but processing in their minds, like, I want yeah. them to think about this shit, especially as they're behind the wheels of like. <clears throat> well, they have to. I mean, it's yeah. like, it's, you know, the old saying, if you want to win, hire Finn is because that Scandinavian driver's ed is two years of doing all of this stuff. And yeah. like that there's, there's a, we all know the, the, we could spend a long time talking about the lacking components of the American educational institution at all levels, but the, that's an that, entire <laughs> other podcast series, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, but the, you want to hear that's, uh, that is tiring. that is something that we've we've become. Um, it's one of my favorite things we get to do is like as we have all of our friends in the industry who are like, "Hey, my kid's getting of driving age. Can I just put them on a plane and ship them to you for a day or two? You know, it's yeah. like especially for my my like really close friends who I know the kids and we've you know I've I've you know I've been around them for their whole lives. It's a really fun rite of passage to like mm -hmm. be the place where I'm like, yeah, they can come stay with me and like stay with me and Chrissy in our house down the street, or they can stay at the ranch and we'll spend two days doing, you know, like I had a, I had my friend send me his kid once and a kid like wasn't super interested in driving, super nice, really shy. And like, you know, we do some stuff and then, you know, it'd be some things and we would just drive around. And so I put him in my, in a, I had an automatic, you know, Ram dually. And so I put him in a six, seven dually and we're driving around. I was like, all right, throw it in reverse. And we're going to back up and he goes, oh, I hate reversing. And I was like, oh, you hate reversing, huh? And so we did, we did our entire slalom and our entire like half mile infield course in reverse four times. And he was just like, oh. and I was like, I know you thought I was like the cool uncle until now. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I promise you, and then we parallel parked a dually like 20 times. And every time he'd get it right, I was like, we're going to play, uh, we're going to play a parallel parking game where every time you get it right, we shorten the space by a foot. And oh, he boy. like, and he like kept he kept doing it until finally like when it was the spot was like you know four feet longer than the truck or something he finally managed to bonk a cone but um it's so fun like i love i love the fact that that's you know that's that's something that we can do again like i take for granted as we all do in our own respects in life right like you guys get you take for granted the vehicles that show up and you get to do oh, this thing's this and that blah 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 and it's like oh yeah Dude. i we all remember very well the time that we were just so stoked to have a car that had functioning AC yes. like last week. <laughs> everybody, everybody with any privilege or luxury whatsoever in their lives takes something for granted. Oh, and we take everything for granted. Everything yeah. is taken for granted. And part of what makes humanity so functionally good at being humans and so good at growth, development, evolution, whatever is the fact that we are so quick to scale and normalize anything we experience. We yep. were recently yep. given all kinds of declassified information about whether or not aliens exist. And 30 minutes later, we're like, yeah, okay, cool. Whatever. Government has aliens. Nobody you, gives a shit. Nobody Reddit? fucking. <laughs> the Reddit, Reddit is like, 
Nobody groceries cared. and gas. Groceries and gas. They were like oh. aliens, and we were like groceries and gas. Like yeah, pretty, nobody pretty called cool. me. and was like, bro, the aliens, dude. Never happened. Nobody the, cared. Nope. Like the Reddit old- subs and posts went front page for about twelve hours after that happened, and then yeah. it it just went. That was back it. To, yeah, and, and like. I mean, my, my personal favorite version of this is the Louis C.K. joke where, you know, he's on the first flight ever with in-flight Wi-Fi. And they're like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. Everybody claps. And then 30 minutes later, she says, I'm sorry we had an issue with the Wi-Fi. You know, it's, mm-hmm. but, you know, you guys, hopefully it was good. The guy slammed the laptop. This is bullshit. Because he has a sense of entitlement for something he didn't know existed. Yep. 30 minutes later, right? like, it is such a fascinating. And for car people, it's the, like, it's whatever thing. It's like, it's it's horsepower. Oh, dude, if I, if I just... Oh, that would be so rad to have a fast car and you get an STI and you're like, it's the fastest car that's ever existed. And a week later, you're like, God, this thing's slow as fuck. I need to, you know, I need to do a turbo swap. Dude, like, we- no matter what we do, we are insatiable. Yeah. We're perpetually dissatisfied. And there's a, there's a version of this that's not just humanity, but then there's the athlete version or the race car driver version, mm-hmm. which is the mark of true genius is at an absolutely insurmountable and mental health issue scale perpetual dissatisfaction at any level of success there is no point at which lewis hamilton has been like god what a perfect season that was amazing yeah, every right. single thing he's yeah we just we yeah. we won 15 out of 16 of the of the past you know 16 races and we god, we almost had all 16 and like that's what oh, makes us good god. what we do that's what drives us and it's also what makes us fucking miserable 16, <laughs> 16 ain't shit anymore apparently but uh yeah. But yeah, no, it's, I just... it's it's anybody with there's a threshold for perfectionism and desired performance. And once you yeah. cross that line, that's it. It's over. You know? Yeah. Next yeah. line. There's nothing else. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, it's Next I mean it's the thing. It's like you stand on top of the mountain and you're like, ah oh, fuck. Well now I've done it. Now I've climbed Everest. What the fuck do I do now? Right? right. Like that's right, 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 right. Right version of that and that's why people I mean, end up doing the fucking what's that the documentary the guy that did all seven of the highest yeah. peaks in a certain yeah. number of hours and, and well, then you, you know you you asked about pike speak and so like taking it a step back you speaking know, of peaks, I, last, here we go last yeah. year yeah, yeah, yeah well no so last year last year i had a, i was really fortunate i'm wearing my old team shirt from last year with general tire and black rifle and my own company on it i was really fortunate to get the opportunity to go run an entire season of rallying at a very high level with a big budget and we did it in a really really like grassroots car because we wanted it to be a really grassroots campaign Mm -hmm. we had budget to run you know a rally two car which would now be basically a top spec car and we were like no we're not going to do that and and i went into the season super excited i was like all right we're going to do this gonna be awesome you know i've worked 20 years in this in this space and i've earned myself a seat and and i you know i know i can like this is going to be great we're filming a show with 20 years jesus and i'm like this is it we're doing this and mm-hmm. it was the most miserable year of my life because the function of a championship is that you defer any level of satisfaction or joy from the individual event to the championship. So you're not allowed to be happy with or stoked for an individual outcome. We don't we don't celebrate an event and go, dude, that was an awesome rally. That was super fun. We go, okay, but we crashed at the last one, so we're still behind in points. And there's you don't get to enjoy any of it. And I I recognize obviously like it's a mindset that's not accurate. Like. Right. I can choose. Mm-hmm. I have the agency to choose how I feel ap- about that. Appreciate it and, and yeah, enjoy but, the moment, and that's important. Ish, like, living in ish. like you're doing what you want to do is a big kind thing. Of, but it's problem, hard to live in that not second do. when it's your big picture. You're doing, you're doing what seventeen year old you wanted to do, and you're not allowing for the fact that it's possible that you might have changed your mind or that. The fact that other people look at that and go, that's the best thing on planet Earth. You should feel lucky. You know, like we live in a space where we, like you said, we're all privileged. That doesn't mean like Brad Pitt's still allowed to have bad days, right? Just because he's a total, <laughs> he's going to still have a bad day, right? It's your net worth does not dictate your mental health. We know that. Yes. Nor do any of the other variables that all of the rest of us look at anybody else and go, man, that should, wouldn't that yep. be nice? Homie's and better looking so, on his worst day than any of us are on our best. So that's hey. for sure. That's, not That's nice. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can't all. I got a weird baby. nose. Come on. <laughs> the uh, but I Love so I did this me, whole I'm season, pretty. and and I and I was miserable, and I didn't enjoy it, and it was, 
it's not to say that I, I, I had a lot of fun and there's a, a lot of individual moments that were great and I'm really mm -hmm. grateful for it. And there's a million good things I could say about it. So it's not, a, I'm not whining. I just, it's that we, I very quickly realized that I built something, which is our rally school and, and the rally ranch that was so good and so tailored to what I love. And it was so satisfying to be in a space where everything I did was creating a bounty that I could share with people that it's mm -hmm. like, do you like, do you like <clears throat> cooking for one or do you like cooking for your family? And going racing is cooking for one. And it's like, you get to make this amazing meal and there's all these people who are a part of it, but at the end of it, it's the, it's the Travis show or it's the Dave show or, right. you know, it's the right. Chris show. It's whoever the driver is. That's the, you win, you lose, you're the center of all of it. And it's your race, especially because I was managing the whole team. And so a team sport becomes a, an individual sport when all of a sudden. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's, <clears throat> and that's, it doesn't, right. But like, even in F1, right. It's still, it's still Lewis Hamilton at the end of the day, who wins the championship. Nobody really pays that much attention to the constructors championship. We don't really talk. And I'm not saying it like, that's, it's not that that's, that that's, nobody Nerves. cares about it. Nerves, we, and that's where it starts and ends we, for but yeah. that's that's it like at the end of it we all over time we're all sure we may have this the statistician brain may remember the constructor but our emotional championship is the driver's championship yeah because we see yeah. ourselves in everybody else we see ourselves in those drivers so it's always about the human and you always have to funnel it to a single person mm -hmm. and so pike speak this year that's what Pike Speak was like for me. It was miserable. I did it for 11 years from 2005 to 2015, and it was miserable, and I hated it. And it, again, I, I, I'm being hyperbolic. Like, obviously, I kept going back, but I was going back like a junkie, not like somebody who was going to have fun. Mm -hmm. And that part, I mean, truly, like once I realized my relationship with this was was not about the joy and excitement of going and doing it. It was like this, this, uh, there was like a, there was a, an insatiable expectation or need so uh i have a a, a really awesome friend named melissa eikoff who um, i met when she was uh, managing partnerships at yokohama um some years ago and i got a message from her that she was like hey i'm executive director at the pikes Peak kill climb now and i was like oh my gosh this is the best news ever because wow. that's one of the things that was really challenging for me of being at pike speak over the years is that organization is you know just functions on a, a it's kind of done the same thing for a really long time. And there's some challenges that have come up for competitors over the years uh, that, you know, sometimes just didn't get met with a team of people who really wanted to solve it. And mm -hmm. I, I'm not speaking disparagingly, mm -hmm. of the, uh, disparagingly of the organization or, or the event. I think they've done an unbelievable job to grow that event up. I think keeping that alive yeah. through the paving years was un an insane challenge. Especially I was there for all of now that it's all tarmac mm -hmm. and like yeah. half of the appeal in the, pre full tarmac days was that it wasn't so yeah yeah it, well it, it was it, the gravel hill climb was amazing it's become the, the intermediate american nurburgring like that's that's yeah. had the equivalent that they've actually managed to do which is huge yeah. you know and it's 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 incredible and i'm super stoked um you know for the organization i just it i didn't feel very welcome there and melissa being there i knew was going to be like she's the right person to to bring about some some of the things that i was really worried about safety wise when i was competing so mm -hmm. i opted to go back but i was like okay what how am i going to do this in a way that heals some of that past experience where it just it that like lingering it's like in my dna that it stressed me out you know it was just like the feeling of everything was Besides the fact that we have to get up at you know one o'clock in the morning for a week straight, it's it's just stressful. So my buddy Cole, who started Sierra Cars, um, yeah, look, little baby, two thousand five baby. Mm. Uh, that was my first year, the old Type R. Yeah, there you go. Peggy, huh? Here's the W's. Um, so I went back with with uh, Cole. That's his personal Sierra Alpha. So the Sierra platform is a single seat. Um, it's sort of meant to be the like Swiss army knife of race cars. It's good on, uh, in the dunes, it's good on the dirt and it's awesome on, on tarmac. So the alpha that he has there is a 500 horsepower turbo Hayabusa in a 1200 pound chassis, basically with, you know, big wing in the front, big wing in the back, um, and big good sticky tires. So fucking God. Yeah. It was real violent. Um, there, that's and, yeah, that's not like power to weight ratio where you're like, oh yeah, C seven Z O six has power. That's power to weight ratio of just 
Kill it's violent. Ass. Yeah, that's well. It's funny. I so I never even sat in it until we rolled it over the scales at like I've driven Sierras a lot, but I never driven the Alpha. So my first time sitting in it was over the scales at Tech. First time driving oh it was the middle gosh. section, which is the W's. And so I I literally climbed in it oh. and I sat down. I was like, hey, it's still up for first, right? And they're like, yep. I'm like, all right, see you guys later. And oh. it took me like five practice runs to even remotely figure out at like the power band and Good. what because it's so peaky, gosh. obviously being a, a high Yeah. Um, but dude, it was the most fun week of racing I've ever had because I, I just kept telling my team, first off, I picked every person there on the team to come hang out. I was like, look, I want to be around a group of people where, you know, inevitably when the car breaks or something happens, I'm still stoked. And mm-hmm. I like, I want to spend the rest of the week with all these people. Yep. And, uh, and also I need to have a partner, a sponsor who comes into this, who like, we have a bigger partnership so that that doesn't become, you know, if we have an issue, they're like, oh, this is, this, you know, so our friends at RG Nets who uh, they do like the uh, networks, Wi-Fi networks for hotels, airports, but mm-hmm. basically revenue generating networks. Um, we're building a really incredible mm-hmm. network at our at our ranch together. And I was like, hey, do you guys want to, you know, be on the car for Pike Speak? And so we're like, yeah, great. And I was like, great. So we printed the wrap, showed up to Colorado and put the wrap on in our Airbnb, as you see there. Um, <laughs> and... And I knew, I was like, look, as long as we get a couple of good shots from Larry Chen of this thing going up the mountain with their branding on it, like, mm. we're good. So we did our first pass. I drove past Larry. I was like, that's a week, boys. We're good to go. So the whole <laughs> rest of the- I was like, dude, it's a track day. We're just, we're just, this is a track day. We're going to have fun. I'm going to drive as fast as I feel comfortable. If we have issues with the car, we park it because it's Cole's personal car. I'm not going to blow it up. Yep. And we ended up cole was there with his he has a power stro- a six liter power stroke swapped r35 oh wow take your time on that. yeah so he has a six a, liter a, what yep a six liter yeah yeah a six liter power stroke powered gtr i raced his sierra alpha so, lucy block six was there six. in the new electric sierra echo and then um Leah was in the Huda Pegasus and we made it through the whole week. We had an awesome time, just like <clears> amazing <throat> family time all week. And come race day, I, I like an idiot, I forgot that it's not a rally car. And so I accidentally completely boiled the brakes two miles from the finish and I had no brakes for the last two miles. And so I wanted to break <laughs> 10 minutes and I, I got a 10 of four. It's like I threw away four? like 30 seconds. Yeah. So, Could you which take is just like- funny. Like, Two seconds roll out and two seconds. Oh, many seconds of roll out for many corners after the break fade. I was just pumping them down the straight, trying to get them to come back. And anyways, I get to the top. Cole makes it up in the GTR. He sets his, you know, his personal best in that car. Uh, 10.04 was my personal best. Um, And then we sit there and we wait and we wait and we wait and Lucy comes up and it's like the water works for all of us seeing Lucy. And I mean, for me, I've been with Sierra for five years watching the development of this car and we've been dreaming about an electric car since we first drove the Sierra. And so seeing that car come to fruition and then seeing Lucy drive it and seeing Lucy make it to the top of Pike's Peak, which Ken wasn't able to do, and the three of us all sharing that moment. And then we went inside and we ate lots of donuts and hung out. And, and then we all, we stood there with our arms around Lucy while we watched Leah take off the start line and we watched her whole run. And then we all walked out together and we sat there and watched Leah come across the finish line. And I mean, I, I, I get goosebumps. I can barely keep it together talking about it. It was one of the most powerful and profound and important moments that I'll ever get to be a part of in, in racing. And it was like, Oh yeah, this is why we do this shit. Right. It's like, Mm -hmm. we don't, I'm not doing this like I I don't give a shit about my like I've long since forgotten my you know bummer I didn't get a nine you know fifty nine like okay life goes on man like yeah. my identity was so tied to that number and that outcome when I was a kid you know when I was back ten years ago racing because mm-hmm. I didn't have anything else and I just kept believing that if I just did if I just did better in a race car then that would be what people would 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 like me for and. I built this uh, other thing that I'm so proud of this community we have here now where like, I, yeah, I don't, my, we drive race cars for fun, not because it means anything. So, um, Pike speak was, was really magical. And there's a Sierra put up, put together an incredible documentary that uh, isn't released yet. Um, of that story with Lucy and it's, it's, um, yeah, have, have some Kleenex for that one. It's, it's pretty, I sat Cole and I watched it at my house and like we finished and we were both like, 
All right, well, I guess we'll come <laughs> yeah, for like 50 minutes sweating. go back to the ranch and tell everybody you have allergies. <laughs> yeah. So. Dude, we talk about this up and down like over and over again. Like, it's, it's not the cars, it's the people, you know. And yeah. This is one I, of those. I tell people all the time. Where... Yeah. Nobody gives a shit about cars. Nobody gives a shit about cars. I'm sorry. Nobody no. fucking cares about cars. Nobody cares about cars. We like cars for what they symbolize. We like them for the way they make us feel. Yep. We like what them for all do. these different things. But all of those right. are because they they bring us into a sense of community. They put me on a podcast with, you know, uh, two shit of my friends like talk shit. Uh-huh. And, and uh, yeah, with fucking Karate Kid over here. And, you know, we... <laughs> we uh, <laughs> a sultry karate kid and I'll take it but like that the reality is all of our best memories i mean again like Ayrton senna dude like that was the most important moment in in like automotive history was when we all watched that and i think it, we all hit us right in the gut when Ayrton's yep. best you know he says his favorite memory in racing is is karting and that's like he's universal yeah like you talked to Vettel. He was at our place last year and he was like, that's, this is, this is what he loves. Like he just wants to like the stuff he gets to do between events. George right. Russell was here this year in the new Enio Scrinadier thing mm-hmm. doing a whole shoot. And he was, his PA messaged us shortly or his executive assistant, sorry, his EA messaged us and was like, Hey, George would like to come back on Monday and just like rip some shit around. Cause he doesn't get to like drive stuff off road. That's you know? awesome. And, and yeah. like at the end of it, we all like <clears throat> those of us who get, you know, are fortunate enough to do all this cool stuff. The more, the cooler the stuff is that we want to do, the more we just want to want to go do hood rat shit with our friends. And so, Dude, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going wheeling in New Hampshire next weekend with my friends and I'm looking forward more to having a meal and some beers with them afterwards than yeah. I am the actual time on the trail. And like, yeah, that's, that's our world. That's our community. That's our people. You know, it's, yeah. it's powerful. And it says a lot that we all come together the way we do, you know, whether it's on our tiny little podcast here or, you know, a collective of a, a huge number of people on, on Pike's peak. It's uh yeah. Well, even that same thing. I mean, Pike's peak is, you know, there's what 50 of us on top of the mountain on race day, you know, yeah, say, 70 just the drivers at the top, right? Yeah, more than that. Drivers, probably. man, and like, yeah. well, it's drivers, and then it's whoever shows up on the cog railroad and has no idea what's going on and why all these men with the goblins <laughs> are all like sitting together eating donuts and watching. Oh, dude, some- the the people <laughs> get, like in the Mount Washington area are are just like, what is this? Like, it's just yeah. like all the off roaders coming together yeah. and everybody else is like so I'm, I'm not supposed to be here in my camera yeah. <laughs> you know that just like <laughs> that just gave me like it's such a big brain i don't even know what it was like they don't close the cog railway during race day <clears throat> no of course not why would you because they like the so that's one of the biggest challenges for pike's peak is that's why we have to be on the mountain at like three o'clock in the morning because we only get to use the road from sun up like the moment that there's enough sunlight to safely run cars are on the yeah. road we have to be off the mountain trucks trailers drivers everything off the mountain when they open it to public traffic at 9 nine thirty. so we're and it used to be a little more flexible but it's like no now it is rigidly off i mean they're bringing in you know whatever 50 grand a day plus on yeah on you know yeah. toll booth fees and all that and the and the the summit house is huge they're like the top of Pike Speak now is this massive building and it's a huge operation. And so, you know, to shut the place down is 50, like to rent the highway is 50 grand a day. So Jeez. if you're going to shut it down, you get, we get one day. And so we don't get to have, you know, pass after pass. We get one shot on race day and you right. get all your little sections for practice days. You get one shot to string it together. And they're sure as hell not going to shut down the cog railway as well. Cause that's who's buying all the shot glasses and snow globes. So right. yeah. it's like, you know, and, and that's just buying all the donuts. Yeah, there's but an opportunity so like for somebody the, to fly a drone. The, <clears throat> yeah, half of the, like up the 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 summit house is literally like you know little uh, post office roped off, and like there's all the drivers sitting around eating our sandwiches and donuts, and 
you know, eating some horrible gluttonous food that we've all been putting off eating for two months <laughs> until we have a pike speak. And those and three pounds like, matter, of, dude. Yeah. And everybody's kind of like kind of starting to get that, you know, between the oxygen deprivation and the exhaustion and the whole week catching up and then the adrenaline wearing off, we're all sort of nodding off, you know? And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you? That's great. Did I? I I glanced at the videos of uh, of the testing that you guys did. What exactly happens when you either do a run or do some testing, and then decide you have to go to the raceway and put in some you know some test efforts at the race? What is it in Colorado Springs? Or... Oh, so. Yeah, so PPIR, Pikes Peak International Pikes Raceway. Peak, yeah, it's been, but, yeah, but it is, is like Colorado Springs. It's like Yeah, it's a half hour south okay. of the Springs. Yeah. Like four minutes. So, and you use yeah, that so we'll, for what? So inevitably throughout the week, you like you get your you get your practice runs in the morning. Pikes Peak is not a kind place for race cars, right? You're, you know, fifteen percent grade in places and no oxygen. Cars mm -hmm. are pissed off all the time. And most of the people were building their cars in the trailer on the way to the race, right? So it's like the cars show yeah. up. They're all one-offs. Like for the most part, these are a lot of one-off cars that are built for this race. SEMA 2.0. Yeah, Bluetooth drive shafts not included. You 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 bring it up. You do the middle section practice. In our case, um, you say, okay, you know, found some issues, or we're overheating, uh, or whatever it is. You make some tweaks, some changes. You go down to Pikes Peak International Raceway. A lot of people. So. Um, Romaine and Ford's the super van, they had two, they had two vans. So they had an entire separate van that they were just running around PPIR all week doing data and testing and burning laps and trying to figure Jeez. out optimal battery settings and discharge <clears throat> and all that stuff. Um, and so that whole affair is its own chaos, right? Like, so we're basically just making setup tweaks. And for me, I just never driven the car. So I like, you know, I went down to PPIR a couple of times. We did some tire testing, some setup, tweaked suspension a little bit, like nothing major. Just wanted to get really comfortable in the car. For us, it was like, do we want to run sway bars or not? You know, like really, really simple setup tweaks and, and just plain getting seat time so I can like push the car somewhere that there's not a cliff. Mm -hmm. So like for me, PPIR was rad because I could come in, be really aggressive under the brakes slide the car around, get on the yeah. throttle early and like see how aggressively I can step it up and, and loop it somewhere where I'm like, all right, got it. That's my limit. Explore the limits the in the control environment. Yeah, exactly what we do at, at the rally school. Just somebody else's track for once. What did you decide with sway bars? <laughs> Out of curiosity. I have no idea. I don't remember. That data has long since left my brain. Uh, Whatever it was, it was fine. In the probably. crawling world, that is a massive, massive decision. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's we were we were disconnected front and rear at one point, and I don't remember what we what we hooked back up. But yeah, the super van, I think, is violent. And that, like, dude, the sound of that going around PPIR was terrifying. So it's like, imagine if all you hear is a dog box and the 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 aerodynamic sound of uh, a seven seventy seven like flying directly Jesus. over you. It's just. <laughs> It's like crazy, violent whooshing and this buttholes clenching. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, yeah exactly. A lot I of think... ducking, like it's a close air support raid or something. I mean, just put... yeah, yeah. Also, yeah, 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 yeah. PPIR is not that far from. There is an actual base, like There's just like north of six... that. It's the Springs, yeah. dude. It's the Air Force Academy. Yeah. It's everything. Like it's <laughs> yeah. NORAD, brother. <laughs> exactly. Ryan Mountain. Oh. Right. Oh, yeah. right. No right. Where we kill everybody like, from. Yeah. yeah, they got like five extra presidents hiding in that mountain. They just, just in they case. Just thaw them out. Yeah. In case they thaw one out and, and put them in. Hugh, put a USB. Hugh you know, Bush and American USB Dad. Board. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the uh, back of the no, van is even wilder because from the side, it just looks like, oh, that's a normal van. No, no, it's not. So, <laughs> it's no, it's not, not. Would you not call normal. it Van Wilder? Yeah. Yeah, I, they definitely figured out how to make a van like actually an interesting that looks aerodynamic like machine. AI yeah. generated bleep, 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 bleep. Yeah. Super van. It's pretty wild, dude. And I'll tell you, it worked. It worked real good. <laughs> it worked real good. But not as good as Robin Shoot. <laughs> huh? Oh, no. Oh, oh. Nothing works as good as Robin. That dude that dude crushes. Yeah, that's <sighs> 
You guys should have Robin on. That dude likes to party. You want to talk weird tech? That's your guy. All right. I'll add it to the list. I'll text him. I'll, I'll text you guys right now. I'll just I'll make it. it. I'll yeah. just... <laughs> Are we wrapping the show up if Dave's texting me for people to talk to? (laughs) No, no, no. I just, just, you know, it's that kind of party. I I always want to make sure we have new guests. Um, Tangent. Rally rescue. Tangent. As if everything else was so on top. (laughs) We followed our perfect trajectory that we have with every show and every guest. Uh, no, I, would, yeah. I would say we followed the Dave trajectory per normal. Yes, we yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's more air hockey than ping pong. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair. Rally I'll take that. rescue. Yeah, so we we haven't we we still haven't done much officially with rally rescue since COVID started. Our shelter director left, and so we we mm-hmm. just kind of you know went went about our um, our rally ready things. We've been rescuing a lot of dogs. Oh, there it is, Robin. So dude, that yeah. car, real quick. That, put that thing back up. We should talk okay. about that real quick. So, yeah. Robin's, <laughs> sorry, Ross. Show show us. Welcome back, Ross. I promise. Yep. Here's what I love oh, so much about this car and this whole program. Robin came as a an engineer with Faraday and was like, "Oh yeah, this would be cool. I should do this." And came sorry. back, and, and yeah, 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 and uh, and and then was like, "I'm gonna get a Wolf and just like do this thing proper." And bought a Wolf sports racer. And then every year. Like this is what I love so much about this program is I used to tell people like back in the mixed surface days, that was when like grassroots teams could really be competitive. You mm-hmm. know, a grassroots guy could come on and like really incorrect. Yeah, you can still do that. Because Robin shows equalizer. up with like five of his friends mm-hmm. and this is all his design. He's a brilliant engineer. He's also the tech director for Nitro Rallycross. Um, and, and he, he just like, designs and builds this whole thing and i show up to his airbnb which is the bottom story of somebody's house where the people are still living and they just love them and like oh yeah you guys can just have downstairs and there's just like all of our like our our pikes peak years air mattresses everywhere and like he doesn't know how many people are even staying there mm-hmm. but he's got like this insane talent pool of the most talented people in their respective niches all downstairs with a bunch of fucking milwaukee power tools cutting holes in the side of his car and adding sprayers and vents and all kinds of bullshit the night before it's supposed to be on the mountain, like after fan fest, they're just like, yeah, doing some last minute tweak. It's like this whole operation is as grassroots as it gets. And he's won what four out of the last five years or five out of the last six, whatever mm-hmm. it is. It's insane. It's fucking incredible. So that dude, that dude's a fucking hero. Yeah. Hook a brother up. Let's, uh, Wait, let's, thing, let's make that happen. Yeah. That thing smoked Ford's factory effort. Like get out of here. That's insane. <laughs> yep. Hey, so the angry man anyway, with the last dog. name Ford somewhere. <laughs> yeah, no shit. So dog. So rally rescue. We we got rally rescue moving again. We uh, we're not doing anything officially under that name right now, but we're just about to kick that back in gear. So we have, I think, currently in our foster network. So Chrissy, my partner, found all of the dog people in our neighborhood, mm. and uh, and she, yeah, this is our most recent um, find. Oh. But this is on top of the mother and like six puppies i think that we have in foster care oh my gosh um what kind of this dog, dog is, is blind blind and deaf um although awesome news we found out two days ago uh that dog has vision some vision in one of its eyes so okay. it, uh which helps understand how it's it like really integrated with the pack really quickly and mm-hmm. it's been doing really well um and like these are all just dogs we find in this area because again yeah People don't. That's, people's relationship to animals is its own thing, and that's some crazy um, Texas stuff. Like where you got that's, you know, you're. I mean, it's you're a doing lot of noble, the world. like yeah, God's a lot work. of the world. <clears throat> yeah, this is this is more common in the world than it's not. You know, it's this is a a problem we've created and have yet to find a solution for. But yep. um, yeah, so it's been cool. I mean, it's it's really nice to have a foster network. We're still able to grab any dog we find my team at the ranch is, is helpful and, and really kind and supportive and helping where they can. And then um, we've just built a really good foster network so we can quickly get them into foster. And then mm-hmm. we play some really quick. Um, and yeah, look at the babies. So, oh, puppers. It's been pretty great, man. Yeah. My, uh, always been, you know, appreciative, appreciative of people who do this stuff. And, 
given the state of the world, you know, realizing what those who take in not not just puffs but people and yeah. animals of any species of need it, it's really it's you know yeah did you it's you about got me with lucy yeah <laughs> so yeah years Chris, ago is- we had a yeah i know years ago we had a dog that looked was the exact same brindle so that this oh. you about got a road trip down on that one yeah she's she was a special little special little nugget it's you know i think again like (laughs) the really the only the only thing that we actually the only real currency that we have my my grandfather passed away a few weeks ago he's 94 and we were really really close always i mean have been for a long time but the the last year of his life we were really close i spent a lot of time with him and we had an amazing relationship and he died very peacefully in his sleep and like you know, it was, I mean, like a best case scenario for everybody. Our whole family, we're having a big celebration next week. And it's, it's, there's just like, we know this and we know it intuitively, but nobody sits on their deathbed and and talks about how they wish they had, you know, spent more time in their finance. And nobody talks about even their hobbies. Like really the only thing any of us ever talk about is that we wish we had spent more time loving more people and things more mm-hmm. proactively and not being as afraid, right? It's, it's usually right. generally where people get to at towards the end of their life is they, they, they wish they were less afraid of things. And sometimes, yes, they wish they were less afraid to take risks and go do the things they wanted to do or whatever, That's or tell people how they felt. Yep. But it's like, it, it's just the, the, the thing that we have that we, we all have access to that doesn't cost anything is love and it's accessible and, and pretty easy to get to. There's a lot of internal walls that make it really hard, especially hard to talk about. But like that, that for me, like that's, that's what the dogs are. They're an easy place where, you know, you come into an environment. I mean, c- coming to a school of any sort is a really vulnerable act. It's mm-hmm. saying, Hey, I'm going to spend a lot of money and I'm going to come in humbly and sit and I'm going to, and I'm going to hopefully take humbly. your knowledge and your hopefully. wisdom. Yeah. And it, well, I, e- even if you're, even if your action or your attitude, oh, Marge is literally doing exactly that about two feet from me with her tongue sticking out right now. <laughs> um, but the act of sitting and learning is the act of the humility of saying like, Hey, I don't know this and you do. So I'm really excited to, to take yeah. this information. And yes, of course there's people who in the moment they're like anxiety creates this ego environment. But like, if you show up, that's an act of humility. Mm-hmm. And and like our job is to reciprocate that with creating a comfortable environment and ultimately with love. Like that's, that's all that we can do. And that to me, like, that's what dogs are. They're a space where when those people come in and they're nervous, they're uncomfortable, you know, where you're taking this big act of vulnerability and you're, you're afraid to sit with other men and, and lead with love and lead with, yep. you know, opening, being really open and asking questions. And, but when people walk in and there's a dog there or there's dogs, they just turn into a like a drooly, bubbly, you know, you do, baby, and <laughs> and they can't come back from that. Once you've once you've disarmed yourself and you've like oh, wow. crouched down on the ground and you've baby talked any creature, you can't then stand back up and be like, anyway. So, I forgot to tell you guys how huge my dick is. Like it doesn't. It's <laughs> gone. That whole experience is gone. That the opportunity to be that guy no oh, longer so exists. Good. So like. <sighs> not just having dogs around, but the act of caring for dogs. And like, look, we just, we all to have any values and live in this world means to be a hypocrite. And that's everybody. It's universal. Whether you want to talk about Israel and Hamas, or you want to talk about, you know, your environment or concerns, and then also talk about the new tires you bought. And like, you know, your big giant diesel truck, like it is, it is to be a hypocrite, the human existence. So like, to argue with your friends about politics, so long as you can do that, knowing that you're both fucking idiots and you're both wrong and you're both absolute. <laughs> the time it's not even spent arguing about politics it could be spent doing something about politics. It's hypocritical by yeah. nature. By it doesn't matter. Every argue about it, fine, but argue about it in a constructive way. That's again from a space of love, where you're not trying to convince somebody that you're right and they're wrong, but you're saying, "Oh man, yeah, that makes sense." You know, this is I kind of ended up here because whatever, but like. I argue because you can argue with people you love in a way that's that's constructive but the point i think is like for me the dogs have always been a place where it's an easy place to say look if we see a dog and it needs something we're just gonna figure it the fuck out and sometimes it sucks and it's really painful and it's really expensive and it's really miserable but again that comes to that privilege of like 
when I started the rally school, I didn't know how I was going to be able to pay for fuel for rally school sometimes. Like I genuinely mm -hmm. didn't know when class was coming up, if I had enough money to pay for the gas to put the class on. And now I'm in a position where if we find a dog on the side of the road, I'll take it to the vet and we'll pay the bills and I'll figure it out later. Mm -hmm. And like yeah. that privilege, the, the ability for us to do that is like, it's a place to stay in gratitude and stay really centered around like what an awesome opportunity that is for, for us to be able to do that. So, sure, yeah. um, yeah, no, I'm, and, and it's also, it's so impactful for so many other people. Like people get to, people get to send $40 in or $20 and know that they played a role in doing something. And like, that's a, that's a gift to be able to give people to live vicariously. And more importantly, be able to take part spiritually in doing some good. And that if we can do a little bit of that, then fuck, you know, hopefully we can solve yeah. something if, if only our own internal bullshit. Right. That's... Oh God. I'm, I'm going to have adopted a rescue dog by the next time we record a show. What? I've what got you... like six. So I was like, homie, uh... you have the pick of the litter. You just got to drive a long way to go get it. No, no, it's worth it. You got, yeah. you got a lot of good press. Cars. What, 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 what kind of puppers do you have? Cause I, I have a very small child. Oh, gosh, so I'm... I got it. You're what? I have a very small child, so I'm, and also a very, oh. very small house. So, yeah, I was to say, yeah, don't. I, I can't we have. have I can't. Um, Ross. Let's see. What kind Leo of dog is that? Tommy. Leo and Tommy. They appear uh, to be oh, some version of hound. Buster, Baba, okay, and Curly. Dave, Dave, text me. Text me. Those are all, <laughs> Ross, those are I'm, all I'm, beagle derivatives. They're going to be oh, noisy. Hi. Honey Dude, if you got honey, you'd, you'd have a Reese. Dave. Reese, come here. Dave, oh, yeah, come, here. Dave. come here. Dave, come here. Text, text me. Oh yeah, and then this is this text is their me. mom. Just, just text me because this is. Yeah. Come on. I don't have disposable income yeah, to on. spend on a dog, but if come if on. we can make this work, I can. I can take a dog. You got this. I, I I'll take a dog again. Oh, Ross, this is why you need a honey because then it would be Reese's I, friend. You know, hi, Dave's Reese. not looking up. Hi, Reese. <laughs> oh, there's oh a baby. hi, Reese. There's a baby. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh that's too good. Yeah. You're gonna cuss at okay. me later because I woke him right. up for that. So, <laughs> uh, I will, I, you don't wake Marge up. I woke Marge up earlier, so we have all these squash in my garden. I'm still eating like half of my diet is still squash. I'm turning orange. And I roast all the squash seeds because they're like pumpkin seeds. And Impressive. Marge was sleeping and she was you know, having her little. And I held a I held a roasted squash seed in front of her nose. And she's like. Oh, oh, oh. I was like, you smell like dad. dad. <laughs> <I just, laughs> uh, yeah, it's my squashes. Yeah, you have so much there. squash. It's insane. It's I still have like eight that are growing. Yeah, man. It's, Dave squash. I'm making squash salsa. Dave squash, um, squash soup. I had, I just had squash like mashed potatoes for dinner tonight. I'm going to, when we finish out here, I have to go finish the, like, it's a, like a pumpkin sized squash. Okay. I have to That's finish a, squash is vegan. generally pretty fucking delicious. So yeah, you can't. Yeah. Squash fucking rules, dude. You got to fuck it's it up nothing. for it to be bad. I, yeah. Yeah. Not, I don't know how you play okay. squash, but um, Right. Hey, in. real fast, I'm going to wrap up the show and hit stop recording. You guys can keep yes. talking about Squash, then, but I think I can hear my wife calling my Dave, name. So. Dave's going to text me <laughs> about doggos. Yeah, I probably also need to go uh, put my Squash away. Oh my god, it's 10 p.m. Well, Good Lord. my yes, wife and her. baby have like, both gone to sleep again. long hours ago. So yeah. I'm, All right, we'll wrap this party I'm, up. I'm good yep. to text about puppers. Yeah, you can rate and review wherever you listen to podcasts, <laughs> like and subscribe on YouTube. Oh, Follow Dave at Rally Ready or uh, was it Texas underscore Dave? Either either account is a good follow. Um, it's true. Hooniverse is a real Hooniverse on Instagram. What is that, Ross? An that RC thing? The the um, base, the sh uh, the something of my... None of those are words, Ross. Problem. None of those are words. <laughs> I was going to say, this trying, is my Do you have a stroke? This is my shit. It's the I thought you were having a stroke. <laughs> oh, Honestly, I'd well, sleep. Good news, take this footage to your doctor to review. It, I so would that's sleep nice. better if that was the case. I'm going to say oh, thank you to Dave man. so I can stop and hit, like, hit 
stop on the recording. So thank you, Dave. It's probably a good idea. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Ross. Thanks, we're Dave. Gonna soon. <laughs> <laughs> we're, gonna, oh, we're just going to call the other room and talking into the puppy. <laughs> <laughs>